guys. Welcome to No Walls. As you can see, everybody's not abiding by the studies <laughs> are being obedient. Welcome to No Walls. This is my first people, never in front video. Of the camp. So this is going to be a new experience. Um, again. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to No Walls. I am so excited to have each of you worshiping with us this Sunday. Um, happy Sunday goes out to all of my sailors and to my young adults and my college students, um, especially as some of you prepare to return back to school. Please stay safe. There's a lot going on in this world. Um, as we saw this past week, we saw um, you know, people who, um, claim that they love the country while they were destroying, you know, a portion of the country. Well, it was confusing. Um, and so we need to stay prayed up. Also, the virus, as you know, has taken on a new form and it is killing more people and um, hospitals are being overrun and things like that. And so please, please protect yourselves as much as you can. Stay home if you can. Um, and that's for everybody. Shelter in place if you can. You don't have to wait for instructions. If you don't have to go out, um, definitely don't go out. Um, and happy Wednesday goes out to my littlest viewer who watches No Walls every Wednesday. Um, I do want to say uh, thank you all so much for giving. Um, you all continue to do so in 2021. Um, we talked about it in Bible study and hopefully I'll have more information for you next week. But we are going to be doing a fast. Um, and this fast is, and they don't want to hear, they're like, we, we don't want to hear the word fast. <laughs> But the fast is a decluttering fast. So we are going to spiritually declutter, physically, our physical bodies declutter. And then in our homes, we are going to declutter. We are going to get rid of those things, um, you know, that just weigh us down, you know, spiritually, uh, in our body and also in our home. And I'm not talking about throwing your kids out and your husband. This is like your closets in your drawer. So don't... <laughs> Don't be like, honey, you got to go. No, 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 not that kind of decluttering. Um, and we are going to um, allow the Holy Spirit to be a part of this cleansing. So you'll get more information on that. And of course, we are working on March Madness. And I'm praying to God um, that we're able to pull it off in excellence and um, in whatever way he uh, wants us to do it. So those are coming soon. So today's message, as always, is going to be eye-opening, I hope. Um, but more than eye-opening, I hope that is ear-opening. So um, I'm going to give you today as much context as I can. Um, and while dealing with a very small uh, focus scripture, but I hope that you know that this message is specifically for you. This message is specifically for believers, for Christians specifically. Um, and if you are not a believer, I pray that this message will open your ears to where you will want to come into the full knowledge of who Jesus Christ is and accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. Um, I will tell you up front, the, the, this message is called, um, hello, is this thing on? <laughs> Is this thing on? Um, and so our focus scripture is going to come from a book that I'm terrified of, um, just like you. And it's okay to be terrified of it just because, you know, it's, y'all know what book that is. That's Revelations. People don't really minister on Revelations too much um, because, you know, we start talking about horse and candles and, you know, I... Yeah, I, yeah, okay, it just sounds scary, even though there's a lot of knowledge in it, there's a lot of warning in it, is a lot of, um, it's telling us what's to come, you know. Um, but this is going to be one I hope that will have you to do a personal, a personal self-examination um, of yourself, of your home, of your life. Um, and so our focus scripture today is going to come from Revelation, the third chapter, and I'm just going to do the 22nd verse. Um, the 22nd verse says, whoever has ears, let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. Revelation 3, 22, whoever has ears, let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. Again, the name of this message is Tap, 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 tap. Is this thing on? <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> um, 
so for those of you who are like, I don't get it, you know, sometimes when people are out, people who are audio uh, technicians, they hate this. They hate when people have microphones and they tap it and go, testing, testing, is this thing on? They hate that. Like, they're like, don't tap it. Just speak into it. <laughs> but that's where that comes from. You know, like, can you hear me? Are you listening? Is this loud enough? Is it clear enough? Is it loud and clear? Um, are you able to hear me? Um, Revelations 3 has one of our favorite scriptures in it. And oftentimes we don't understand it. So we use it out of context. Um, I will tell you up front, the scripture is, um, um, you, you are neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. And therefore, you know, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And, and then we go around saying, Hey, you can't be lukewarm. You got, you can't, you, you know, either hot or you're cold. Um, some people take that to say, you have to be hot. You have to be on fire for the Lord. And if you're cold, that means you're, you know, you're not going to make it into heaven. So you got to choose. Um, and we get that because there is a scripture that says, choose you this day who you will serve. Um, and this is a lot. So I hope that you guys are writing or are interested or are paying attention. Just stay with me because it's a lot. The scripture about being lukewarm Sometimes we say the hot, like what I was previously describing. Sometimes we say cold um, because, you know, where the devil is, is hot and you don't want to be down there. So you need to be cold. And sometimes we tell people, so you need to either be for God or against God. And if you're lukewarm, it's the same thing as, as um, you know, choosing between God. But that's this particular scripture is not talking about lukewarm in that uh, way. Um, it is true that either you're for God or you're against him. That is a true statement and that is in scripture that, that you're either for him. And if you're not for him, you're against him. You can't be in between. Um, let me, let me, let me go back to the, to, to Joshua. Um, at the end of Joshua's life, he, um, pulled aside the elders and, and them. And, and he says, listen, um, let me, let me remind y'all who the Lord God is. I'm, I'm my, my time on this earth has come to an end and I won't be here. And so let me remind you guys of who God is. Let me tell you what he's done for us. Um, and he is, you know, so eloquently reminds him, takes him back through the history of who God has been to the Israelites. Um, and then what he does is then he calls all of them with the people and he says, and then the Lord, he brings them all before God. And he says, okay, we're all standing before God. Um, and here's what God is saying to you. And then God, uh, through Joshua begins to tell them, don't forget, I did this. I did this. I did this. Remember all my promises. Remember all the people that I delivered into your hands, just like I said that I would, you know, um, and so here's who I've been in your life. And just as Joshua was talking to the elders before that and telling them, remember, this is God. Then God has all the people to come. And he, this is all Old Testament, not revelations, not the future, not the New Testament. This is all Old Testament. And then Joshua says to them, so listen, um, you need to choose the Lord, your God. But if you think it's evil to serve God, if you think it's wrong to choose God, then you choose this day who you will serve like today. And they like, we're not stupid. <laughs> That's what they say. You know, we're going to choose God, the Lord God. Like, yes, he's done all these things for us. And we are not going to be so dumb as not to choose him. Like we know that's where our blessings have come from. We know that's where our success has come from. And so we are going to choose God. And Josh was like, you do understand that you are renewing your covenant. That's basically what he's saying. You're renewing your covenant with God. You are telling, saying before him that you're choosing him. And he's like, just like he has prospered you, um, if you, if you go against him, if you don't keep this promise, he will destroy you. He will bring all the evil against you. So make sure you understand you are making this promise, this agreement, this covenant before God and with God. And they say, absolutely. And then Joshua dies, but that's where choose you this day, who you will serve. Fast forward all the way to revelation by revelation. Um, 
Revelation is written by John, but these are letters from Jesus to the church. These are not letters to sinners. These are not letters to people who don't know who Jesus is. These are letters specifically. This is important to the church, which means why <laughs> is Jesus <laughs> writing these kinds of letters to the church? And that's what we need to be asking ourselves today. It's seven churches and it's seven letters to these churches. And, and I've missed that so much in my life. I've, I've not really, really just sat down and considered that revelation, these letters are not to the world. These letters are not written to people in the world. They're written to the churches in these cities, which means something is not right within the church. I'm probably gonna mess up the names of these cities, um, but that's okay. Um, you can read it and then you can pronounce it however you want. You could go on uh, YouTube, Google, all these other places and they will properly tell you how to pronounce them. So forgive me ahead of time to those of you who are educated in the pronunciation of these difficult cities or words or whatever, but I'm gonna do the best that I can. So, in chapter three, uh, he begins, and I know I'm going to probably mess this up. I know Philadelphia is one of them at the start of chapter three. Um, I don't, re I wanna say Sardis might be first. I am not sure, so forgive me. And I will put it up here <laughs> if I'm saying it right or wrong. <laughs> but at the beginning, he is basically telling uh, the first, the, the, the church, the first church in chapter three, he's saying, hey, listen, um, these are some things that you guys are getting wrong. I mean, these are some things that y'all are, and, but, but not everybody. Some of the people within uh, the church are doing right. And, you know, so here's what, here's what you need to work on. And here's what you need to continue doing. That's basically Jesus's letter to uh, the church at Sardis, I believe. Um, then he goes on to talk to the church, um, I want to say Philadelphia. I, I can't remember. Uh, uh, I think so. <laughs> Again, I'll put it up here. I'm so sorry. Um, but and then he's saying, hey, listen, let me tell you guys, you guys are doing a really, really, really good job. And, you know, people will, will fall at your feet. And, you know, he, he begins to tell them um, how pleased he is with them. But then he gets to the church of... Laodicea, I'm going to guess, Laodicea. And if I'm saying it wrong to the scholars, I apologize. Um, but we're gonna say Laodicea for now. And Laodicea was this phenomenal city. Rich, they have everything. They don't have a want, they don't have a need, they are rich. They are self-sufficient. They have the best doctors. They have everything. This city is where you want to live. You don't have a need. You don't want for anything. They are perfect in every way. They are great. They are just wonderful, beautiful. The best everything. They're so arrogant and so perfect and so great that even when this earthquake came, right, and people were trying to help the city. They're like, we're rich. We don't need your help. They, they, they declined help because they had so much. They're like, we got it. We don't need anything. Um, but with everything that they had, with everything that was good and right and perfect and excellent, with all of the houses and cards and money and your business is doing good in the midst of the virus and the attacks on the Capitol and you haven't been affected like everybody else. They basically had a perfect life except the craziest thing about this city is the water system. You have everything. You have everything. They were perfect in every way except their water system and their water system 
right? Caused them to have water that was lukewarm. Jesus, and Jesus, you remember, Jesus loved to talk in parables. And so, in essence, he was using an illustration of something that was real, that was happening real in their life to fully explain in a spiritual context the same thing. That's where lukewarm is coming from. Because in this city of Laodicea, they literally, literally, physically had lukewarm water. Okay? Laodicea, as perfect and beautiful as they were, that had this lukewarm water, they were getting their water from two other cities, from two other places. Um, the city of Hierapolis, it starts with an H. <laughs> it starts with an H, and so that's how I remember that it, they had hot water. So they were like six miles away, and they had hot water water their hot water people would go to for healing so you go to this city and you have spiritual healing and restoration and comfort people would sit in their warm springs for their body aches and for things like that so that city was known for their hot springs and so their hot springs were being brought into laodicea for their hot water but on the way that hot water was being cooled down on its way into Laodicea that so they were drawing water hot water from there and then they were drawing cold water from another city um, uh, Colossi right uh, I'm gonna I don't know how to pronounce it I'm gonna put the cities right here so you can pronounce it however you want to but from Colossi they were getting cold water so see the H and the C hot and cold see that okay I saw it was kind of cool anyway y'all cuz see that's so crazy see that city starts with an H for hot the city that they were getting the cold water from starts with a C and Laodicea starts with an L for lukewarm. See that hot cold lukewarm? Oh my God, it's crazy. Okay, Holy Spirit. Anyway, that's, that's, cool. that's just so cool to me. So you have H, C, and L. Hot water coming from here, cold water coming from here. And when they both come, they form lukewarm water. Because the cold water uh, was being warmed on its way and the hot water was being cooled on its way. And so their water at Laodicea was lukewarm and it was literally making people sick. This has nothing to do with spiritual. This has nothing to do with the letter from Jesus. This is truth. This is just what was happening in that time. Hot water coming from the H city, cold water coming from the C city, both landing in the lukewarm at the L city. I just love that. Anyway, so um, when Jesus is talking to the church at Laodicea, it's saying, um, I can see what you're doing. I can see all your deeds. Like I'm telling you ahead of time, I'm judging your deeds and your actions and your words and everything. And you guys are lukewarm. I would rather, listen to what he's saying. I would rather that you be hot, right? Like Hierapolis, <laughs> how do you pronounce it? <laughs> because they are providing a spiritual, spiritual um, restoration and spiritual healing, right? Hot. Or I'd rather you be cold where you are refreshing and you're encouraging people. But you, you are lukewarm. You are serving no purpose. You are neither hot nor cold. And because you are neither you are not doing anything. You're not producing anything. As a matter of fact, you're making people sick. How are you making people sick being lukewarm? Because they believe they are self-sufficient. They are relying on their richness. They are relying on um, what they can do for themselves. And because of what they can do for themselves, they are no longer depending on me, their real source. 
So when we're talking about being lukewarm, hot or cold, we're not saying everybody should be hot because you should have a warm hot heart, not a cold heart. No. And we're not saying everybody should be cold because that's where God is because the devil, you know, he's going to be burned. No. Jesus is literally saying, be either one. Either provide spiritual healing and be hot, warm springs, or be cold, be an encourager, be refreshing. But you are lukewarm. You are doing nothing. You are doing nothing for the kingdom. And so he begins to tell them how they can, like, like, like you got to do a spiritual check of yourself. You are the church. You are who these letters are being written to. Are you lukewarm? How many people this past week did you share the gospel with? Okay, you prayed. Great. Okay, you were in your home and you all had communion and you remembered what Jesus did for you on the cross. Absolutely. Yes. Good. But how many people have grown in their faith because of you this past week or this past month or this past year? How many people were led back to Jesus because of your words or your deeds? And so he says in this chapter, behold, this he's talking not to sinners. He's talking to us, the church. And I never fully really got, grasped who these letters were written to in Revelation. These were letters from Jesus to, to the church. And he's saying to the church, to Christians. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And, and all you have to do is answer and I will come in. He is saying, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. I'm, I'm knocking. I'm, I'm asking you to let me come into your heart so that you are productive, so that you are either, either one, either be hot. That's great. Or be cold. That's great. But don't be lukewarm and be sickening to people and sickening to yourselves. And then he says, by the time we get to verse 22, he's like, y'all got to hear me. Knock, knock, knock. Y'all, hey, is, is this thing on? <laughs> like, are you listening? And, and the thing about it is, um, yes, Jesus will correct us and he will do so in love. Um, we, we should want the correction of Jesus. We want to, we want to be corrected before he returns like a thief in the night. And we're like, Lord, Lord, he's like, I don't know you. Like y'all didn't do yep, that fig that <laughs> Reverend Melissa talked about a few weeks ago. You don't want to be that non-producing fig tree. You look like you're the church. You sound like you're the church, but your life does not reflect Jesus Christ. You may say, I, why do I want to be, you know, corrected by Jesus? Because he rebukes and corrects those whom he loves. That's why these letters are to the church. These are to people who have accepted him. These are people who acknowledge that he is the Lord Jesus Christ. He does not come. Jesus does not come to correct us, to destroy us, but to redeem us. He's never going to correct you to destroy you. It's not about destruction. It's about redemption. And so as we start this new year, because we are still starting this new year. We, we are still starting until the end of February. We're still starting. We've already seen that 2020, there was no line between 2020 and 2021 because on January the 6th, they stormed the Capitol. Like, like the virus is now killing 4,000 people a day. So that, nothing stopped that. But that at the beginning of this year, you still, if you can hear this message, you still have a chance. You still have a chance to be corrected. You still have a chance to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so many churches are consumed with, um, look at what we did. Look at what we have done. And it's all to say what we, not look at what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing through us. 
if we're not spreading the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ in our everyday life, then we're lukewarm. And he's saying, I will spit you out of my mouth. He was talking to the church. He's saying to the church, I will spit you out of my mouth. Because when the lights go off, when you push stop on this video, when you turn a deaf ear and say, well, okay, let me go to the next message. I just want to hear a message that tells me that I'm perfect and that I'm great and that I'm going to prosper this year. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you that Jesus has already written letters to the churches, to the seven churches, and go and read it. And he's talking to us saying we have to open the door and we have to let him back into our heart. We have to commune with the Holy Spirit. We have to let the Lord order our steps. We have to be obedient even when it's difficult. We don't want to suffer. But the Word of God says, listen, if you're going to follow me, you got to take up your cross. That cross was not fun. It wasn't like Jesus was like, hey, where's my cross? Oh, I want no. We wear crosses around our necks, but you have to understand what that means. Someone once said, you wouldn't wear, an, uh, what if he was electrocuted? Would you wear the electric chair around your neck? And I was like, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> but you have to take up your cross. That means you have to suffer. There is suffering when you choose Jesus. It's not easy to live for Jesus Christ because the world has all these other flashy signs. Get rich. If you're rich, you have everything. And Jesus said, I am everything. The earth, the whole earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Are you being productive in your faith? Are you sharing your faith with people who don't know who Jesus is or for people who are losing it? People who have turned away from God. They're seeking something else. They're seeking other shelter. Our shelter in place is under the shadow of the of the Almighty. That's where we shelter in place. Do you have family and friends that are sheltering in place somewhere else, somewhere that will not last? Well, today, Jesus is calling you. He's calling you back to himself to do his work. And his work, it is difficult, but we know that the harvest is ripe and the laborers are few. I love you all so much. If you don't know who Jesus Christ is, then today is a really good day to reach out to us at No Walls and we will be glad and happy to help you in your walk with Jesus Christ. You just have to admit that you are a sinner and believe that God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and that Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit so that he could go prepare a place for us and that he is coming back for us. And then you have to be willing to be on the battlefield for him, to tell other people what he did for you. And if you have lost your, your flame, your fire, your uh, passion for serving Jesus Christ, today is a really good day to renew that. With everything going on in the world, you don't know when your last day will be. It's a good day. It's a good day to, to be uh, refined and, and, and for God to restore you and restore that passion. All this other stuff is going to fade away. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you right now saying thank you so much for another chance, God, to serve you, to worship you, to call you dad, like you're our dad. And we are so grateful that you sent Jesus down to die for us, to, to redeem us, God. Give us the heart of Christ that we would just want to go and serve you, that we would want to tell other people what you have done for us, that we know that you are going to return for us one day, God. When you search our hearts, God, let it anything in us that's not like you, God, we ask right now that you would take it out, that when you search our heart, oh God, that you would find that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. God, that you would just see us and know that we are either hot or we are cold and that we are not lukewarm. God, we know that you are standing at the door and knocking. Let us open the door so that you will come in and sup with us and we will sup with you. That we will forever recognize that you are the true vine. So that we will produce good fruit, God. These and all other blessings we ask in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. One of our friends, uh, Miss Shakira, she is uh, doing a, a blanket drive, a coat drive, um, and she goes um, into the um, Atlanta area, metro Atlanta area, and she and a friend, they do blankets and they do coats. Um, for those of you know, who know how to contact me directly, please feel free to contact me directly and you can let me know if you have any blankets that you want to donate or any coats that you would like to donate. Um, if you would like to do so and you are not in the Metro Atlanta area, um, then please reach out to us at nowallsnowwhat at gmail.com. Let us know. We'll get the information to uh, Shakira and we want to help uh, keep people warm. Um, this winter um, and they do it every year and so we want to be of service to them um, and anything that we can do to represent Jesus Christ anything we can do to represent Jesus Christ um, and who he is we want to be a part of um, I love each of you God bless you I pray that your new year is uh, just I mean, just going amazing. <laughs> um, and I will be so excited to see you guys back next week. I love you all so much. Bye-bye.